Hey everybody, it's Taylor Sparks and I'm back with another video. I think you like this one for today. If you have read any of the research papers that have come out of my group, then maybe you've noticed a trend. Take a look at these figures, like this one, maybe that one, or this one here. See the trend there? We spend a lot of time trying to make beautiful, interesting, well done figures. And it takes a lot of work. In fact, I went over it in my intro to Python course for Materials Engineers. I did a series of three awesome videos. This one up here, which talks about the good and bad basics of what makes a good and bad figure. This one, which covers basic plots. And then this one here for the more advanced plots. So check those out. But today, today I have something really cool to show you. It was inspired by a tweet by the one and only Andrew Rosen, postdoc at LBNL and great guy. He said this, check it out. Using chat GPT to write Python code for matplotlib is a game changer. I never have to look up syntax again. You can just tell it things like looks great, but make the color map more visually appealing and it works pretty well. It generated all this with ease. And I heard heard other people say the same thing, that chat GPT was doing pretty amazing stuff to make coding easier. So in today's video, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so let's pop over to chat GPT and give this a try. Okay, Jet GPT, during this session, I'm going to refer to you as Jarvis, and I expect you to respond to me as if I was Iron Man. You can call me things like Sir, Dr. Sparks, or Taylor. Well, I've been working on a new niobium alloy, and I want to plot it using Python matplotlib. Help me come up with some fake data for strength versus grain size and plot it. Okay, check it out what it's done so far. It output the output in a code block, which I can very simply type copy code, and I could take it over to Jupyter Notebook or whatever else you want to use, Spider, um, to plot it. But look at this. It's created data. It's got your grain size is going to be, it's giving you values of grain size between 0 and 10, right? 50 different values between that range. And then the strength is equal to this custom function it wrote. It said, well, the strength should be some constant times some number times the grain size with some random noise in there, right? So let's take that. Uh, and send it over and see how it looks. By the way, it even included units, MPA and micrometers, which are the typical things it would use when you were plotting strength versus grain size. Okay, Jarvis, not bad for a first try, but you know that strength and grain size should obey the traditional Hall-Petch relationship where strength gets stronger as you move towards smaller grain size. Therefore, use the following function. Strength equals K plus C times d to the negative one-half power. Nice touch adding the random noise comma, but it's too much, period. Reduce the noise by a factor of 100. Okay, here's the updated code. Now you'll notice that I asked for it to reduce the noise by a factor of 100, and it went from 20 down to 0.2. So it's done it. So let's take a look at this. Okay, much better Jarvis. I like it, period. But you know that I prefer square plots. Go ahead and make the squat pl plot square. And I also want equal number of major ticks on both the X and Y axes. Let's do five ticks on each one. Jarvis, that is not square, period. I don't think the set aspect approach is working, period. Do it another way. Okay, so it didn't work to do the set aspect before. It didn't give us a square figure. But then the second time around, you can just tell it to try something else. And it did this figure size equals a 6 by 6. So it's a 6 by 6 inch plot, which is what I do when I make my figure square. Let's see if that worked. Okay, now we're talking much better, Jarvis, period. Okay, let's try the following. 
I want the tick marks to always point inside. They should be on all four sides of the plot. I'd also like some minor ticks. In fact, let's make a grid with our major and minor ticks, period. The minor tick grid lines should be a light gray dotted, and the major tick lines should be a slightly darker gray solid. I don't see the minor ticks, period. Let's do at least three minor ticks between every major tick. Okay, that's looking really good. But the minor ticks should also always point inward, period. I also want the font size to be set to 16 throughout the entire plot. Let's also use the Greek letter mu as a symbol instead of writing out micro for micrometers. the font is still a smidge too small. Let's change the overall figure size from 6x6 down to 5x5. Five five. That's much better. Okay, now let's imagine that I have a second set of data where the strength is, say, 75% of the original data set, period. I want to plot this second set using a second subplot located above the original data set. The overall figure should still be square, but it now has two subplots. Okay, so you notice here when it did its first response, because the code's getting a little bit long, it just stopped and it wasn't done. If you tried to plot this, it'll give you an error or it just won't be complete. So what I did is I said, pick up where you left off and it was able to do it. So I'm gonna have to copy this now in two chunks. Okay, Jarvis, that's looking really good. But we don't need an X label for the upper subplot and we only need one Y label for both subplots. Let's have it be centered along the Y axis make sure to move it outwards so it doesn't overlap the text tick mark labels. Okay, comma, the Y label should be centered on the total figure, not just the upper subplot, period. We can turn off the X label tick labels, and we can reduce the gap in the vertical distance between the two subplots. It looks like you accidentally turned off the tick labels on the lower subplot, but I wanted them turned off on the upper subplot, period. Please turn them back on on the lower subplot, and I still don't see a Y label, period. 
make sure that it's moved far enough left that the tick mark labels aren't covering it. So you can see in the figure that we're sort of reaching a point of diminishing returns to the point where we could just make the adjustments ourselves. It's now added a title. It's still not putting the text label in the right spot. It needs to increase the padding and move it down using the text command probably instead of a labeling command. It's not turning off the correct X labels, but it's still pretty good. Let's do one final test. Okay, Jarvis, time to get interesting with the colors. Go ahead and get funky with the colors on the two different data sets. Purple and green are your idea of funky colors? Come on, man, this is Iron Man. How about some Iron Man themed colors? Okay, and I ran out of requests. I was doing too much, so I think you get the idea. Pretty powerful tool. Let's do a little bit of tinkering and try and make this thing look a little bit better. Now that we've had it do a lot of the heavy work, let's see if we can push it the rest of the way. Okay, with a little bit of work, you can take the baseline stuff that uh, ChatGPT spit out for us and we can turn it into some nice looking plots. Um, one of the real great things about plotting in Python, of course, is that you can just save this, right? Once you get something nice, you can just keep on using it and make adjustments as you go. Um, there's a lot more powerful things that you can do with coding in, in ChatGPT. I'll probably be doing some follow-up videos because honestly, I think it's a game changer. I think it allows students to as you've seen me in this video do, talk to the computer as if it were a person, right? And have it respond in meaningful ways and most of the time get it right. And if you know the basics of coding, then you can look through and you can make those minor adjustments to get it do what you to do what you want it to do. Um, pretty rad, pretty rad. I think it's a game changer for people anyways. You don't have to spend years learning how to code. You can get the basics, get it to do this, and then turn it out. Okay, stay tuned for more videos. If you liked this, if this was a fun uh, way to do it, then let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate it.
Okay, talk to you all later.